Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article of discussion is about Chandrayaan 2. The Chandrayaan 2 is India's unmanned lunar mission. It had two objectives. One was to deal with the science or the scientific exploration. And this was to be demonstrated by the orbiter. It is this orbiter which will help us study the origins of the moon, the evolution of the moon by conducting certain topographical studies with the help of its payload. So what are these payloads? The payloads are nothing but the instruments that are present in the satellite and all those electronic gadgets that are present within the satellite are called as the payload. It is with the help of the payload that that we would be able to understand the origins of the moon and its correlation between the earth as well as the moon. The second key objective of this mission was the technological exploration and this was to be performed by land of Vikram. Had this touchstone gone really successful, the land of would have helped us understand the seismic waves in the moon. It is through this that we would have explored the idea of the core, the mantle as well as the crust that is present in the lunar surface. So the Chandrayaan two spacecraft comprised of three segments. One is the orbiter, then you have the lander and finally what you have is the pragyan which is housed within the lander. The orbiter is healthy and running fine. It is functioning in the lunar orbit. The major problem is with respect to the technological demonstration and that is to do with the lander. The Vikram was basically minutes away from landing on the moon. It began its descent onto the lunar surface. Just before it was accomplished, ISRO lost contact with it. It had travelled a distance of 3,83,998 km of 3,84,000 km between the Earth and the Moon. It is just that 2.1 km away from its destiny that we lost contact with the lander. It is this loss of communication at an altitude of 2.1 km that led to the failure of technology demonstration. Now let us try and understand how the Vikram lander takes a descent and how we lost the connectivity during this particular process towards the soft landing. What you have to understand here is you have the lunar surface. Then you have an altitude of about let's say 100 km from the lunar surface where this lander is currently traveling. It is traveling at a speed of about 6000 km per hour. What it means is since we have to ensure that it happens on a soft landing mode, the speed of this lander has to be reduced. So what do we need? We need three important parameters that we need to strike up. One, what we need is reducing the speed of this lander. Two, what we need to control is the trajectory or the path. And three, is to ensure that it is landing in a predetermined place. Which means that only when we are able to meet all these important parameters of controlling the speed of the lander, the trajectory and the place of its landing, that is when we will have a successful mission of this soft landing. So this soft landing was basically again divided into four different stages. That is from an altitude of about 100 km until it reaches the ground. Let us try and understand what are these different phases from about 100 km until its touchdown. The first phase is what is called as the rough breaking phase. This happens at an altitude of about 100 km. So you have the lunar surface and from the lunar surface this particular lander is at about 100 km. In this rough breaking phase, the most important functionality is with respect to the liquid fuel thrusters. What are these thrusters? These are nothing but accommodating or putting in of energy in a particular direction. For deceleration, for slowing down of this particular lander, the thrusters will be fired in the direction of the movement of the lander. So the lander is currently taking a descent. So it means you are opting for a thrust or applying of energy in a downward direction, which means towards the lander, towards the lunar surface. And when you require the ascent of it, what you do is provide the energy in the opposite direction. It is in this phase, four out of the five liquid fuel thrusters are immediately ignited turned on and fired up and it is this that will lead to deacceleration or slowdown of this particular lander. So kindly remember in simple terms what this will do is slow down the movement of this lander so that it falls on the lunar surface in a soft and a precise manner. This is followed by what is called as the absolute navigation phase. This is the second phase and this happens when this particular lander is at an altitude 
of about 30 kilometer. In the first phase, the lander is at an altitude of about 100 kilometer. Now it has reached to an altitude of about 30 kilometer. In this absolute navigation phase, there are two important instruments. One is the laser altimeter. The other is lander position detection camera. What is the job role of the laser altimeter? It is this that will define or find out what altitude the lander is present at. And after getting this clear picture, it is the lander position detection camera which will identify the zone of its landing. So it is these two that will identify the altitude and the place that this particular lander is supposed supposed to drop in. In the first phase, kindly remember the legs of these landers are not opened up, which means in the rough braking phase, the legs of the lander are not opened, but it is in the absolute navigation phase that the legs of the lander opens up and it is here that it points towards the downward direction towards the lunar surface. The third phase is called as the fine braking phase. It has two important functionalities. One, it uses the same lander position detection camera to identify the precise location of its landing and it will also use these thrusters to further decrease the speed of these landers. Finally, what we have is called as the hovering phase. What happens with the help of the absolute navigation phase and the fine braking phase, what we see is that the lander would have selected a designated place for its landing. So after it has decided it will come to a particular altitude let's say about 400 meters it is at this particular moment that it will start moving towards the lunar surface so it will start moving in that particular direction slowly and ultimately decide its destination and come up and drop to this lunar surface in the form of soft landing so these are the four stages as to how the lander is going to be initiated from about 100 kilometer to the one where it is going to softly land on the lunar surface. So what might have gone wrong that this particular mission was not successful? That is because some of the scientists say that there are about four rockets which was basically present to slow down the moving of the lander. In case they are not in sync with each other, that is when such things can result in. The other reason also given by the scientists is because of overheating within the lander or it can also be due to the malfunctioning of the system. So one, because the rockets were not in sync with each other. The other is because of the overheating of the lander or the malfunctioning of the system. This particular connectivity was unsuccessful are some of the reasons given by the scientists. When it comes to the Pragyan, which is housed in the lander, it comes out of the lander after three hours of the landing. So the minute it steps out, it will collect the data within that particular surface area and it will be also provided to the base station as well. So both the lander and the rover are designed to be operational for about 14 days. So because the lander had some issues, we are not able to establish the communication. What is the functionality of the rover is also missing under this particular scenario. Now that we have understood what the lander is, let's understand what the orbiter is. Why? Because the orbiter is circling the moon at an altitude of about 100 km. It is this orbiter which will cast the light on the earth as well as the moon relation as well as the origin. So this orbiter has about eight payloads. Let's try and understand what are these payloads? What are their functionalities with respect to the orbiter? The first one is with respect to the terrain mapping camera. What this terrain mapping camera will basically do is it will give an idea of the terrain of the lunar surface. Are there any mountains? Are there any craters? Or what are the various other features? So all these features will be defined by the terrain mapping camera. So it will give a clear map of what is the structure, the layout of the lunar surface. This is followed by dual frequency synthetic aperture radar. The dual frequency basically means it can be employed both in the L as well as the S bands. So what is the functionality of this particular payload? What it will do is it will study the water as well as the ice components in the south pole as well as the thickness of the lunar dust on the surface. This is followed by Chandrayaan-2 large area soft X-ray spectrometer also called as class. So this class basically measures the moon's 
X-ray fluorescence. What does this payload measure? Let's take for example the lunar surface. There are elements which are present on the lunar surface. Now let's say there is emission that is happening from the sun. So there are X-rays that are coming up. They are hitting the lunar surface and after they hit they can cause some of the elements to emit additional X-rays. It is this emission of additional X-rays is what is called as the fluorescence. So basically the elements that are present on the lunar surface emit the x-rays and they can be identified based on the energy of the x-rays that are emitted. So greater the intensity of the x-rays, greater is the abundance of that particular element. So it is through this re-emission from the lunar surface that we would be able to capture and examine the presence of major elements such as magnesium, aluminium, silicon, so on and so forth. So there is the lunar surface, there are x-rays that are hitting the lunar surface based on the element that is present, it reflects back and it is this reflection, the intensity, the amount of energy through which we would be able to capture the presence of elements. This is also followed by what is called as the solar x-ray monitor. It is this that will observe the x-rays that are emitted by the sun as well as its corona, measures the intensity of the solar radiation and also supports the class to perform its operations. This is followed by orbiter high resolution camera. It is this that helps the lander. How? It will detect whether that particular area where the lander is supposed to land is free of any craters or boulders and it will also notify the same to the lander. So what it basically does is it will provide high resolution images of the landing site ensuring the lander's safe touchdown. This is followed by the imaging IR spectrometer. It is this that helps in finding out the global mineralogical as well as volatile mapping of the moon. The next payload is the Chandrayaan 2 Atmospheric Compositional Explorer Tour. As the name suggests it is this that helps in studying the composition and the distribution of the neutral exosphere. To understand what this basically is, we will have to understand the atmosphere of the earth as well as the atmosphere of the moon. The atmosphere of the earth is very dense which means that there is lot of collision between the molecules. But when it comes to the atmosphere of the moon, they are not dense but they are thin which also means there is less of collision between the molecules. So because the atmosphere of the moon is very thin, collision free atmosphere that extends all the way up to the ground that is why it is also called as the surface boundary exosphere. So what this payload will basically do is it will understand the atmosphere of the moon. This is followed by the dual frequency radio science. What this will basically do is it will study the density of the electrons in the moon's ionosphere that is the uppermost part of the atmosphere that is ionized by the radiation. Also remember, ISRO chairman K. Sivan said that the life of the orbiter has been extended to about 7.5 km from the current one year. Why? Because they are able to use the fuel efficiently and economically. So the lifetime has been extended to about 7.5 years. So what is the conclusion that we can draw? The scientists going forward would examine all the data minutely to detect and find out what exactly went wrong. They would work on establishing the connect with the lander. The orbiter would look for the lander, the Chandrayaan 2 mission will not have any impact on the future Gagayan mission as well. So it is this that we need to understand in reference to this article as an appreciation to ISRO which is very much required in the light of all these activities. Dear ISRO, we will rejoice in happiness by remembering your achievements from the past and indulge in celebration. Saluting the ones who made this mission possible, let's sing in their admiration. ISRO, you have made India high and mighty, let's take them as our inspiration. So as aspirants of the civil service exam, what is that we can learn from ISRO's activities? Every person has temporary glitches in life, so do the organization. What matters is to look at the mistakes avoid them and embark the journey for the future. It is these failures which are the stepping stone of success. You as aspirants are aspiring to lead India to the doors of victory. You are the ones who have chosen the path of sacrifice to make India win. You are the future of Mother India to protect her and take care of her. It is you who will make her proud by wiping the tears from the fears of the poor. For all those who have chosen the path of civil service Trust me, you are leading India towards prosperity. 
the nation is with isro and we at byju's are with you in your journey come fall in love with learning never ever ever never give up continue this journey to ensure that you reach the gates of labasna now let's look into the next article this article here is speaking about the pangolins the indian pangolins has an iucn status of endangered it is present in the indian subcontinent and it is an insectivore which basically feeds on all the ants the termites digging them out of the mounds and locks using their long claws that are present in their body it is a nocturnal animal which rest during the day another important factor is with respect to its unique attributes when you look at its structure it has scales on its body which can act as the armory so what it basically does is it will curl itself into the ball and it is this that acts as the self defense against the predators such as the tigers as well as the lion when you look at the picture the color of the scales is currently brown in color but depending on the color of the earth as well as its surroundings its color may change as well that is the unique attribution so what are the threats when it comes to these pangolins the indian pangolin is threatened by hunting for its meat so people kill it because they consume the meat of these pangolins and various other body parts are also used in the traditional medicines as well and how does it help in traditional medicine the chinese basically believe the scales are believed to have wide variety of medicinal values where it would help in dealing with the psoriasis Now let's look into the next article. The next article says panel set up to identify infrastructure projects for 100 lakh crore investments. Infrastructure are very essential for the economy. It includes the construction of roads, the railways, the infrastructural projects with respect to electricity, so on and so forth. It is this infrastructure investment that will give fuel to the economy. It is this infrastructural development that will add value within the economy and it will give the boost to the GDP. as well as the development as well but currently in a bit to further give a push to the country's infrastructure in the backdrop of economic slowdown the government has constituted a high level task force and this particular task force will be headed by the economic affairs secretary so when you look at the composition it will have the economic affairs secretary which will be heading it and this will also have the secretaries from different ministries senior officials as well as the niti ayog ceo so what these people will basically identify is they will identify what are the infrastructural projects that needs to be developed during the next 5 years which means that india is planning to achieve a 5 trillion economy so to achieve this 5 trillion economy there needs to be some projects which needs to be identified and money has to be invested so this task force will identify all those areas where investment of money is required whether it is greenfield which means new projects or brownfield that is already existing projects so identify these core infrastructural projects so that the government is able to infuse money so that we as india are able to achieve 5 trillion economy so what are the terms of reference given to this task force so what it will basically do is it will estimate the annual infrastructure investment or the capital cost let's say for example since this will be a 5 year program identify one project or number of project for the first year for the year 2019 and 20 then the following year so for the next consecutive number of years identify what are the projects the government needs to invest and also estimate an annual infrastructure investment money after estimating the annual cost this task force will also guide the ministries in identifying appropriate sources of financing which means that let's take for example there is infrastructure development that is required when it comes to the road sector so identify which ministry and number of ministries that is required for coordination and also ensure that they have relevant amount of sourcing of money as well so identify which ministry is going to develop that project and also ensure that there is finance that is also provided to these ministries so that there is development of the project so the idea here is to guide the ministries to identify the project projects as well as the sources of financing the third term of reference is that we have given the estimated annual cost we are able to guide the ministries as well and now suggest the measures as to how these ministries will have to monitor that particular project suggest them ways as to how they can minimize the cost of it as well as the time overruns it is this 
terms of reference that this particular task force will have to comply by. So each ministry department would be able to monitor the projects so as to ensure they are timely as well as within the cost implementation. And also remember, these projects are in terms of social as well as the economic infrastructure. So economic infrastructure here includes the railway, the road sector, so on and so forth. And the social infrastructure also includes the health sector, the education sector and so on. So this is what we need to understand in reference to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about one nation, one ration card. A detailed analysis of this is provided on 4th of September 2019 under the fifth topic, four more states to join ration card portability at 15 minutes 10 seconds, kindly look into it. But what is an addition to this particular article is with respect to the difficulties or the challenges when it comes to its implementation. The first key factor or the challenge is with respect to the execution of this particular project. There are multiple states in India. The government of India provides some amount of money to the National Food Security Act. But there are states in India which also provide other commodities as well. Let's take for example, the government of India provides wheat, rice as well as cereals. Now let's take the example of Tamil Nadu. The state of Tamil Nadu also provides additional subsidized sugar, pulses as well as oil as well. So it is provided by the state of Tamil Nadu and it is not being serviced by the government of India. So what Tamil Nadu has said is it will not be providing this subsidized sugar pulses as well as oil to the migrant workers. Why? Because it is sourced from the consolidated fund of Tamil Nadu and the central government is not providing any money for this. So Tamil Nadu has rejected this particular proposal of providing this ration to the immigrant workers. This is the key concern. The next key concern is with respect to the migration data. There are people who are moving from let's say for example Maharashtra to Karnataka or from Maharashtra to Tamil Nadu. There are people who migrate for 10 days, 15 days, 20 days. Let's say for example the same person has moved from the source of Maharashtra to Karnataka. Within a span of 10 days he has also moved to Tamil Nadu as well. So there is no fixed data as to when he is moving to which state. So how can the state accommodate the food subsidies as well as the ration to this particular person when you have no data about the internal migration. So it is this that it is spoken about when it comes to the data statistics. The third and the important factor is also with respect to the execution. When it comes to the state of Jharkhand, there are systems, there are other POS and so on and so forth. So you require internet connectivity as well as system to execute this particular project. However, due to failure of the POS machines as well as the computers which have the, all the data of those beneficiaries, this is failing with time. So there are people who are suffering because of it. So because there is lack of POS machines, lack of systems which have the beneficiaries name, the subsidies are not provided to the intended beneficiaries. And that is another major concern is what this article trying to speak up. So addressing all these key factors is the major upgradation that is to be seen by the central government is what this article all about. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about the merger of the public banks. The entire analysis of this is done on 31st of August 2019 under the first topic 10 public sector banks to be merged. So please look into it. A clear cut analysis of the entire view is given under this discussion. Now let's look into some of the prelims practice questions. Consider the following statements about the Berry Sheet. It was a private mission to the moon by the Israel non-profit Space IL. It was built to win the now defunct 20 million Google Lunar X Prize. Which of the above statements are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we picked this article? That is because there has been a reference with respect to the Berry Sheet which is an Israeli private mission which also crashed on the moon. Now let's look into the next practice question. Dobodari Bridge connects which two countries? The answer to this is North Korea and South Korea. What is the context? 
Defense Minister Rajnath Singh was at this particular bridge that connects North and South Korea as given under this particular article. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. It is a landlocked country located in Southern Africa. It is between Limpopo as well as the Zambezi rivers. It is surrounded by Mozambique, Botswana and South Africa. The above statements describe which country? The answer to this is Zimbabwe. Why have we picked this up? Because this article makes a reference with respect to Zimbabwe. So kindly look into the map for the geographical location of Zimbabwe. Now let's look into the next practice question. In India, the problem of soil erosion is associated with which of the following? Terrace cultivation, deforestation, tropical climate. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is two only. Terrace cultivation is wrong and tropical climate is wrong. It is only deforestation which is associated with soil erosion. Now let's look into the mains practice question. Emotional intelligence sometimes is actually more important than general intelligence. Substantiate. What are the objectives of Chandrayaan 2? Explain in detail the three modules assisting this particular objective. So please Please write all your answers on the comment section so that the Baiju's team can look into it and you guys can also have the peer review into it. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.